Is this a game changer in hammock tarps? Let's find out. What's up everybody, I'm Dan and welcome back to Backpacking Adventures where we talk about everything backpacking, hiking and gear. And if you're new to this channel and those interest you, consider subscribing and make sure you hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Today I'm going to talk about a new polyester sill fabric tarp, the Xenon Bonded Tarp from Dutchwear Gear. I'm going to go over all the specs, the benefits, how I even have mine rigged, and I'm going to talk about my thoughts on this compared to Dyneema tarps. And I'll put all the links to all this gear in the description. The Xenon Bonded Tarps come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They come in a rectangle shape, a hex shape, winter, which is with door flaps, and what they call the dirtbag den, which is a tarp for ground camping. They come in both 11 and 12 feet long. They come in two weights of fabric. The regular is the Xenon Sill 1.1, and they have an ultranite version, which is the Xenon Sill 0.9. The regular Xenon 1.1 comes in nine colors, and the ultralight Xenon 0.9 comes in five colors. Now, for either one of these, you can also pick from a variety of designs that Dutchware has and many different types of camo. Like I said before, these come in both 11 foot and 12 foot. And all of the tarps are nine and a half feet wide. Each tarp has four corner tie out points, as well as you can choose to have the pull outs on the side. The main benefit to this tarp is you don't have to seam seal it. The ridge line, the ridge pull out points, and the side pull outs are all bonded. They're not stitched at all, so they'll never leak. And because there's no stitching in the ridge line, in the ridge line pull out points or the side pull outs, it won't perforate and cause even further links. So the tarp will last a lot longer, be more durable than other tarps. Another benefit to this tarp is that it's easy to repair. Because Dutchware had figured out how to bond this type of material, he can create bonded tape so that if you get a tear, you can just simply put a piece of tape on it, just like you would with a Dyneema tarp. And the pullouts are optional. You don't have to get the pullouts if you don't want to. Another benefit is if you choose not to and you want them, you can get them put on later with no problems. And since they're bonded, the pullouts can go pretty much anywhere you want them on the tarp. And because this is a bonded tarp and not sewn, it has some of those unique abilities as a Dyneema tarp, but for a fraction of the cost. So now that gets me into the cost of this tarp. At the filming of this video, the tarp costs starting at $130 and can go upwards of $200 depending on the type, the material, and the different things you select. Also, they have some unique designs that are a little bit more expensive that will bring the price up. You have to check those out on the website. So now I got the specs out of the way, let me show you how I have mine rigged. Now before I start, I just want to point out that I have all my tarps set up identical to this. They all have the same type of stakes, the same ridge lines, everything, so I don't have to think about anything different if I switch tarps between trips to trips. Now the tarp I chose is a Xenon bonded winter tarp, so it has the doors, it's a bigger tarp. This has an 11 foot ridge line. I chose the ultralight version, which is a Xenon 0.9, and the color is charcoal gray. And I did choose to have the side pullouts. Now mine weighs 16 ounces and that's with the ridge line, these pullouts, the tarp, all the shock cord, how I have the doors connected. And that's not too bad. To compare this to my winter tarp, my Dyneema winter tarp, that's 13 ounces. So this is only three ounces more than a Dyneema tarp. For the ridge line, I used to use the continuous ridge line, which was a ridge line that goes from tree to tree and your tarp attaches to it with a pressic knot. And on one side I had a wasp, the other side I just had a regular hook. I changed to that, um, wasn't working for me, I, I couldn't slide it easy. So anyway, I switched to the Dutchware Stingers and they kind of function similar to the wasp. And the, basically they clip to your hammock like a carabiner. And on one end they are similar to the wasp. There's a line attached the ridge line itself is attached directly to the stinger and it goes around the tree and back and then you hook it just like you do with the wasp. And it is a split ridge line, meaning it's connected to each pull out point. And so far I'm liking this a lot better. It's just To me it's just easier. Now for my corner tie out points, I put a small length of shock cord on there first. And what this does is this provides a little bit of give 
in a high wind situation and it helps prevent your tarp from tearing. And on the shock cord, I have what's called a flea and it's very similar to a wasp in how it ties out. Now to stake this out, I use some stakes I had from Z-Packs, I can't remember the name, and six foot of zingit. And that's attached to the stakes. It just makes it easier that way. And it's very easy then just to connect it right to the flea. And I also carry a couple of 15 foot length pieces of line that I also use. Instead of using the stakes, I'll tie it to a bush or a tree or something like that. And since some of the line is attached to the stakes, if I don't use it, I don't have that line dang dangling there off my tarp. And having the lines attached to the stake, well, it's easy to pick up. I don't usually have to bend over to pull the stakes out. And if they drop in the leaves on a fall day, it's easier to find the stakes. To store this, I use the snake skins. And this one happens to be one that's split down the center. So I have one half on one end, the other half on the other. And what this does, it allows me to wrangle this tarp in and store it a lot easier. Or when I deploy it, I just put it up in the snake skin and I don't have this flapping around while I'm trying to get it set up. It just makes it for a much easier setup. Since this is the winter tarp, it has doors. These are great for wind, for rain, for crosswinds, for snow, for whatever weather situation, these are great. Or you can stow them away and you don't have to worry about the doors. Now you can hook these to however you want. You can take a line to the stakes, line to the ground, stake it out separately. What I do is I use a length of shock cord with a mitten hook. And I can then connect this to the other shock cord on the tie out. And I can do this from inside the tarp. I never have to get out. Now to stow these doors, I do it on the inside of the tarp. Reason being is if I have it pitched in an A-frame or in porch mode and it starts raining or whatever and I want to shut the door, it's cold, I want to shut the doors, I can do it without even having to get out. Also, it keeps these doors dry. So if they're on the outside and it's raining and I have to bring them in, it can bring some water in. So now what I do to, to hook them is I take the mitten hook from the one door and then I take all the way across and then they're stowed away and that's where they'll stay. You can do the same thing on the outside if you want, whatever, but this works for me. And sometimes you can hang light clothes on here to dry out. As far as side pullouts, I don't really stake these to the ground. I have a short piece of cord on here with a loop with a pressic knot. And what I do is either I use my trekking poles across or sometimes I will use my line if there's a tree or a bush happens to be there that I can tie it out to. But for the trekking pole, you simply take your trekking pole, you loop it, you do the same to the other side. Once I have the other side on, you can tighten them both down just by sliding it down and it'll stay there. And it pulls them out and up. So it provides you with a lot of room. So you see, it really widens this whole area out in here. Even if there's wind, it'll keep it, which is windy right now, it'll keep it pulled away from you, giving you tons of space with your hammock. So now, is this really a game changer in hammock tarps? I think it is. Now, since this has some of the similar qualities as Dyneema, let's compare the two. And as you, everyone's aware of the benefits of Dyneema, it's lighter, it doesn't need to be seam sealed, it's durable, it's strong, and it's very easy to repair. Now, the downside to Dyneema is it is very, 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 did I say very expensive? A, a comparable winter tarp to this could cost upwards of five, six hundred dollars. So, this tarp has a lot of those same benefits as Dyneema, but yet it is a fraction of the cost. And one of the other downsides to Dyneema is it's not as packable as sil poly or polyester tarps. It's just not. So you do get some of those same benefits with the xenon bonded tarps. They're light. Mine is 16 ounces. And again, that's with all the hardware and everything attached to it, which is only three ounces less than my comparable Dyneema winter tarp. This tarp is strong. It's repairable just like Dyneema with bonded tape and it requires no seam sealing whatsoever. So it has a lot of those qualities of Dyneema. So basically the areas where it does excel over Dyneema is that it costs a lot less and it's much more packable than a Dyneema tarp. 
So that's everything about the Xenon bonded tarps from Dutchwear Gear. So let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And do you think it's a game changer? If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.